What's up guys, this is Legal Thomas and welcome back. So this is Tamur and this is Alan. We just finished watching two uh, Filipino proud videos and this is the third part. Really excited to check this one out. And here we go. Just think like Efren and then you'll be alright. Efren. <laughs> well, Reyes, what do you say? This is mine, like Einstein's. You know? He had the greatest ability you think to see a shot in the zigzag. Um, do you believe he was going to make that shot? I thought he was... Uh, I'm sure he was just trying to hit it, and he made it, but... The way hey. he kicked that, he had another way to kick at the ball, and I... I still to this day don't understand why he kicked that way. He could have kicked the other mm, way. Angle, sir. But he kicked the way he could win. <laughs> yes, 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 he did. <laughs> a head scratch from a genius. Huh? Oh, that's like a real good one. Oh, it's oh, it's toothless, but the most dangerous. Yes, <laughs> baby. <laughs> His legend was so famous that some aspiring young players had all their teeth removed just to replicate his success. Whoa! I guess it worked. Meet the magician, Efren Bata Reyes. He was born and raised in Pampanga. He's the fifth child among nine siblings. It was quite a big family to keep afloat, so at age 5, his dad brought him along to Manila to have a better income to support them. Efren was a shy kid growing up and struggled to interact with kids his age, so instead of playing outside, he worked as a spotter and a janitor at his uncle's billiards hall called Lucky 13. He made it his home as he played billiards all day and slept on the pool table every night. This is when he started gambling at a very young age. He was so young that he was too short to reach the pool table so he would stack some coke cases just to make some of his shots. This was when he got the nickname Bata to distinguish him from an older Efren who also played the pool in their hall. As Efren continued playing, he kept rapidly improving until he beat every player in their hall. So at age 21, his uncle started bringing him along to bigger money matches. The Hustler movie was very popular at the time, so gambling at different pool halls was a thing, and Efren was beating everybody. There was a time when he went to Clark Air Base to literally farm dollars from American soldiers. And because of this, his name had become a terror in pool halls and he started running out of opponents. So his income from gambling started to run dry. He had no choice but to work for a local comic printing press which paid him only 90 pesos or $2 a month. Obviously, he wasn't satisfied with how much he was making so in just less than a year, he went right back into playing billiards. In 1975, Efren started planning a trip to the US to play against American pool players. But an American sports writer apparently had been taking notice of him while he was beating everybody. This writer went back to the US and informed their best pool players that a new threat is emerging. His name is Efren Reyes. Because of this, the Americans were able to scout him and found out about his reputation, so this ruined Efren's plan to hustle American players for money. For those who are confused, hustling is kind of similar to smurfing in video games. It's like a mythic player playing the Grandmaster rank in Mobile Legends to farm easy wins. In Efren's case, he wanted to farm wins which translate into dollars to support his family. In order to counter that obstacle, he decided to take on an alias. Cesar Morales. Cesar Morales. This allowed him to play everybody in the US the and beat yeah? everyone of them. Billiard hall after billiard hall. He left a trail of destruction, leaving each opponent oh, demoralized, not oh. knowing what hit them. Like I swear, his story almost sounds like a backstory of an OP anime sensei who looks like a joke but when in action, transforms into some kind of a forbidden folklore beast. Anyway, his hustling days continued in the 80s until he discovered the big money tournaments. He oh, entered under his bra. alias and went on to win his first ever tournament as Cesar Morales. This gained him instant fans, but when he was asked to sign one of those autographs, he accidentally exposed his identity because he subconsciously wrote his real name. And because of this, uh. his hustling days were over, so he focused on playing oh, and dominating tournaments. Yeah. 
ஏன்னா இவன் பேர் சொன்னா அவனுக்கு விளையாட்டு சேர்த்துக்க மாட்டாங்க ஜெயிச்சிருவான்னு பேரை மாத்தி இருப்பா அங்க விளையாண்டு சின்ன சின்ன டோர்னமெண்ட்ஸ் எல்லாம் போய் ஜெயிச்சுட்டு வந்துடறான் ஈஸியா ஜெயிச்சு காசு சம்பாதிக்கிறான் அப்புறம் போய் சைன் போட சொல்றாங்க இவன் பேரே சைன் போட்டான் மாட்டிட்டான் <laughs> ஜஸ்ட்ாங்க <laughs> and a hanky on his hand there are more examples <laughs> so f left looking up oh my god you left me that is the r sun i o really Aside from these amazing shots, Efren is also the author of the greatest shot in pool history. He was playing against one of the greatest pool players at the time, Earl Strickland. The match was very close as they were tied at 12 racks each in a race to 13 match. Whoever wins the rack becomes the champion. Strickland did the break to pocket the two ball, then attempted to pull off a safety play, hiding the one ball behind the seven and eight ball, but he failed to do so, so Efren took advantage. He then handled business as usual. Ooh, does he hit these shots good? But not until the five ball became the object ball. A little bit. Just a little bit, I said. What? He didn't have to do that. You see what I'm talking about? Mm, that's right. Oh. Now, why did he do that? He got himself into trouble because the six ball was slightly blocking him. If in the five ball, you have to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, couple of six sides to not foul. Full points to get it. Our opponent is going to go. சோ இப்போ இந்த 5 பால் அடிக்கணும் இந்த 6 பால் இதுக்கு முன்னாடி தொட்டு போச்சுனா அவுட் ஓ ஃபவுல் போடாம நம்ம போடுங்க சேஃப்டி ப்ளே எஃப் ரன் டிட் திஸ் ஓ நோ ஐ டிட் வாட்ச் தி 8 வாட்ச் தி 8 ஓ மை கிட்னஸ் திஸ் போட் ஆன் ஸ்ட்ரிக்ட்லி சோ ஓ மை கிட்னஸ் an impressive shot for sure but this wasn't the greatest shot i was talking about uh, because this shot has gotten him into an even bigger trouble this is the cue ball And this is the object ball. Put it under the three other balls are blocking every option F and Hans are attempting a safety play, let alone hitting the object ball was virtually impossible. But despite the predicament, F and Hans proceed to leave his mark by pulling off the greatest shot ever made in the history of billiards. The iconic Z shot. Oh, yo! ஒருத்தர் <laughs> 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 What I like the most about Efren yeah, is that yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. remained humble. While some opponents would flex on him, I'm breaking the balls very well, so that's uh, that's good for me. I've been playing pool 40 years. I feel like I'm playing perfect. I feel good. I feel very comfortable. It just looks like a one man show. You know, that, that's why this game is the toughest game I've ever played. He'd usually just respond with humility. Well, I feel like I'm playing very well. You know, I am I don't know if I'm playing good or I or my playing bad. I'm not lucky to play. And then proceeds to give his opponent a high quality billiards seminar. Yeah, you like this so far, huh? You know, it's, it's pretty good over in that section, huh? And after embarrassing them, yeah! he'd usually just say this iconic line. I get lucky to you. We play uh, like this every year before. 
maybe I, I don't have a chance. This is uh, too much money for me, you know. Efren's career is definitely full of legendary moments, but it would take me hours to show them all. <laughs> for now, let me just do the honors of flexing his unmatched achievements. The magician Efren Bata Reyes is a winner of over 100 <laughs> international <laughs> titles. He's also the first player ever to have won the WPA World Championships in two different pool disciplines, namely 8-ball and 9-ball. A 4-time Sans Regency champion, a 13-time Derby City Classic champion, and a 2-time World Cup champion with the Spartan Django Bustamante. To this day, he has earned the respect of not just his countrymen, but also sports legends all over the world. He's so good! They're really good at Joe Rogan. Who? Philippines. Okay. Some of the best pool players of all time. You see on my wall out there, I have uh, two photos, of signed photos of Filipino pool players. Efren Reyes and um, Francisco Bustamante. Top 10. Efren's probably number one ever. Most people agree with that. The best player on the player number that one. I really always liked is Efren Reyes. I, I looked up to Efren. Uh, Efren Reyes. He's one guy I grew up watching when I was young, you know. He's probably the best pro player I've ever seen and probably lived. And he was like an idol from Africa. In basketball, there is FJ. Michael. In billiards, Jordan. there is Afred. In Jordan bowling, Jordan. there is Paeng. The bowling legend is Paeng Nepomuceno. The most important 10-pin bowling title. He is a six-time bowling world champion and Guinness oh. world record holder, not to mention a global bowling hall of famer. He's considered by many as a sports goat, greatest of all time. Rafael Paeng de Pumuseno was born and raised in Quezon City. City. His dad was a bowling coach but he first fell in love with the sport of golf and he was even doing great competitively. On one fateful rainy day, young Paeng forgot to bring his umbrella so he had to take shelter. The man literally proved that looks can be deceiving. Technical analysis, very short coming up right now. Wow, he's not done. It's on its way, and there it is, all ten. The strike that he was looking for, and the sign of a man who says, "I'm number one." And those fans who have made it all the way here from the Philippines know that they are looking at the world champion for the third time in his career. Pang Nepomuceno comes through on the wire and steals it in the tent as Grabowski threw the title away. Aeng would then go on to continue dominating the sport for a total of four decades as he would win a total of six world championships and hold a total of four world records, making him the undisputed GOAT in the sport. He carried our flag since day one, making his entire nation proud. But pride never got into his head. Now listen, you've got the fourth champion, the World Cup title. Are you going to come back for number five? I don't know. Uh, it all depends on the Lord. Because I have to give credit to God. 
You're very moved, obviously, and, and so are we. Congratulations. To this day, he's still active in the sport as the only Asian coach to have the USBC Gold Level certification and continues to hone the skills of the younger generation. But the ex generation is just one of a kind because another phenom was also wrecking havoc in the different department. The world of speed. Speed up. Lydia Diay de Vega was born and raised in Mekawai and Bulacan. In her childhood, she rarely became the eighth when playing tag with friends because she was just too fast. This got the attention of the school's athletic coaches, so she got invited to train to compete in the sport of track and field. Lydia's dad was a cop so he was very strict with her so she kept her training in secret until her dad started noticing her getting tired more often which led to him finding out about it. Her tata then gave her a condition that he would only allow her to compete if he coaches her himself. Lydia agreed so not long after, she started dominating the sport by winning her first two gold medals in the 1981 SEA Games in both the 200 and 400 meter dash. This got her qualified to compete in the 1982 Asian Games. This is where the big names compete including the favorite to win the event. India's well-known speed powerhouse, P.T. Usha. But our hungry 18 year old Lydia was unfazed by the pressure. At first, Lydia seems to be falling behind in the fifth place right before Usha. But on the 50 meter mark, Lydia shifted gears and went pedal to the metal, pulling off the upset and yeah, gaining her first mala. ever Asian Games wow, gold medal at a very young age, dethroning Usha in the process. Competition on mm. the Asian Games in the middle. But Usha wasn't going down without a fight because come next year in the Asian Championships, she would win the gold against Lydia, officially forming a rivalry between the two fastest women in Asia. Their fans went back and forth about who really was the fastest but all the debate would be put to an end in the 1986 Asian Games. This win solidified Lydia de Vega's title as Asia's fastest woman. She would then go on to continue her reign until the early 90s, amassing a total of 15 gold medals across different competitions in Asia. To this day, her undeniable speed behind her beautiful smile will always be remembered as an inspiration for many aspiring young athletes. And one of those young athletes is this kid. Check this out. Wait, wait. Gymnastics. Just so much attitude. So clean. If you enjoy anime like backstories, then look no further than Carlos Idriel Yulo. He was born and raised in Malate, Metro Manila. Their house was close to Rizal Memorial Sports Complex so he grew up watching Filipino gymnasts training and competing there. So it was only natural for him to take the same path. He trained every day at a very young age and it paid off as he won most of his competitions in minor leagues. He kept training until he became a teenager despite the country's inferior facilities and minimal athlete support. That's until he met the Japanese gymnastic coach Munihiro Kugimiya. He was sent to the Philippines by the Japan Gymnastics Association to train overseas athletes with good potential. On Coach Kugimiya's first visit, he immediately noticed the disadvantages of Carlos' training conditions. It kind of hurts hearing this from a coach but I cannot disagree because it does happen. Maybe it's the reason why this diving team flopped in the 2015 SEA Games. Philippine diving team. Oh. They're having a rough go at it to start off with. They, they got started with diver John Anderson from Riga. Earned a zero for his routine which didn't exactly go as planned as he landed on his back. And <laughs> then <laughs> 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 Lift off a little. Okay. Lots of reaction on 
அதாவது இப்படி விழுகிறாங்க Carlos grabbed the opportunity oh. but he never realized how hard it would become for him. He left his family in the Philippines and started living together with Coach Kugimiya in a small apartment while studying high school at Taekyo University. This is a school where most elite student athletes go. Carlos was only on his second year. He struggled in school because he suddenly had to learn to both read and write in Japanese. To accelerate his improvement, Carlos' coach required him to write the entries in his diary on a daily basis. He studied during the daytime and spent the rest of his free time training with his coach. Our young Carlos obviously got culture shocked so he started showing some signs of demotivation. He would make mistakes he normally wouldn't and fall down more often than usual. Coach Kugimiya's very strict training approach wasn't helping either. Focus on going to war again you doing like this, right? The going to big injury if you don't do that there. Do you think you're doing it again? Without thinking. Keep trying. Mm. The don't just training. Carlos Diary entries never talked about his feelings so Coach Kugimiya had no clue about what to do with him anymore. It was so bad that there was a point when Carlos told him that he wanted to quit. The coach was at his wit's end so he decided to pull off one more trick to motivate Carlos. He brought him to an All Japan National Gymnastics competition. Coach Kugimiya was one of the judges there and one of the competitors is Japan's Olympic gold medalist, Kenzo Shirai. This guy is considered as one of the greatest young gymnasts of the day. Reigning floor champion Shirai put in a reigning champion performance on the floor. His 16.133 He holds two Guinness World Records as the youngest gymnast to ever win a gold medal on a world stage at 17 and the only human being to have pulled off a salto backward stretch with quadruple twist or known today as the Shirai. Shirai. Whoa. Yes, it was named after him along with five other great moves he invented himself. The dude was an absolute genius. He rightfully earned the nickname Mr. Twister and I'm not even surprised about it. Watching Kenzo perform and win seemed to have made Carlos uneasy. He might have just realized that he still had a long, long way to go. But in that day's diary entry, he never talked about quitting. Instead, he wrote about his admiration for Kenzo's talent. He started writing about his feelings which was kind of unusual for him. The next day, he showed up early in the gym and wrote his own training plan without being told by his coach. He seemed to have found a new source of motivation. Later that year, Carlos competed in the 2018 World Artistic Gymnastics Championships in Doha, Qatar. And guess what? One of his opponents was Mr. Twister himself, Kenzo Shirai. He performed first and of course lived up to his nickname. World champion on this apparatus from Japan, Kenzo Shirai. Oh, and the triple twisting double tuck to start. <laughs> he twists so quickly. Two and a half back, two and a half front. And that's a quadruple twisting somersault. Deep breath. Focus on the task at hand. Three and a half twists. Followed by the full twisting front. So difficult. Last shot. And a triple twist to finish. You have time to spare. That was Kenzo Shirai. 14.8. Such a terrifying way to establish immense pressure. They can only imagine what Carlos was feeling at that moment because he's the next one to perform. And what a moment for this youngster, Carlo Yudlo from Philippines, just 18 years of age, his first year as a senior. Small gymnast, but he packs a punch. The announcer said that because Carlos only stands at 4'11". While Kenzo is known for his twist, Carlos shines with his power and elevation. Top of Pike half. Beautiful fight. Just take a look at that height. Dude is literally a living trampoline. No, I hate to play, man. Oh, oh. 
Oh, just Hold holding up. it together there Hold the combination. Just, 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 just. Right. Oh, oh, three and a half, half. That was lovely. Mm. Oh. Tidy in the air. Fast in the twist. Now the arms coming out to show control. Full twist in front, double twist in front. Excellent awareness. Quick glance at the scoreboard. How much time has he got? He's got his 10 seconds. That's no penalty for time. There's a triple twist to finish. He's there. Clenching the floor with his toes. What a talent this young man is. The score coming in. 14.6. He moves into the silver medal position. Apparently it wasn't enough. And his silver medal would then become bronze because Russia's Artur de Laloyan would beat Kenzel's score, dethroning him in the process. Straight front, double pike front. Oh, yeah. Lovely control. Oh. Double twisting, double tuck. There's lovely style in his movement. Two and a half twist, twist, double no, no, no. twisting front. That's the uh, difficulty. Locking the feet Difficulty together. execution. Custom hour, you know, execute money. You know. Celebrate easy hour, you know, you know, you know, difficulty low. Carlos Bronze medal finish wasn't perfect for sure, but it still third. made him the first Filipino and Southeast Asian gymnast third. to have third. ever third. won a medal third. on a world stage. He kept competing and training after the event until it was time for another shot the following year. The 2019 World Artistic Gymnastics Championships in Stuttgart, Germany. Kenzo Shirai didn't make it to the competition because of an ankle injury. But the guy who beat them, Arthur de Laloyan, was there. But surprisingly, he was a non-factor in the competition as he only finished fourth. No, we still have Arthur de Laloyan to go. He's got a pretty good record at the World Championship. Oh, but... There he lost his ball slightly. The guy who became a problem though was Israel's Artem Delgopia. Powerful, powerful tumbler. He showcased the balance of power and technique, which gave him a score that is high enough to warrant an early celebration from the crowd and his team, because it was even higher than the score of last year's reigning champion. But you guys may have already heard of the saying, never count a Filipino out. ஜம்ப் <laughs> 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 ஃபஸ்ட்டு வந்து இஸ்ரேல் கார் போயிட்டான் செகண்ட் ரஷ்யன் வந்துட்டான் இது தேர்டு இதில் இவன் அடித்தானே ஃபஸ்ட்டு போயிடுவான் ஓ ஓகே அந்த ஜம்ப் எவ்ரிங் அதிக <laughs> 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 So fast in the twist. That was just a double twist there. It happened so quickly. I'm going to only go for a stuck card in shop on. And a triple twist to finish off from Carlos Edgar Yulo. Looking at Artem's face feels like he's about Ooh. to pass out. So And when the score gets revealed, it's Yulo. Full of it up on Jay's top. 15.3 for Carlos Yulo. He's uh. gone into the lead. He already uh. made uh. his three years ago. Uh. He might. Just win. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I'm going to get it on the Philippines. 
What a moment for him and what a moment for the Philippines. And just like that, Carlo Yulo won the first ever gold medal for the Philippines in Artistic World's Gymnastics. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor to the winner, the national anthem wow. of Philippines. ரேஸ் மலைக்கோதுங்க <laughs> 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 So what did we learn from their stories? For me, no, it's their no, unrelenting no. guts and determination. They guts. did not win just because they are Filipinos. They won because they put in the work. They went through loss, pain, and insurmountable obstacles. They had the choice to make those things become the reason for their failure. But instead, they made it become the reason for their success. And that's what makes them Filipino. So what about you? Are you here to just listen to Filipino success stories or decide to become the story? Nah. Good. Sawala. Winning market. Ah. Samaya pandran la video. Motivation ah irukke. Guts and hard work. Avanga adillama adu enna da winning pannalo adu romba count pannikuvanga ah aama ellarume romba take it simple soft character soft mostly filipinos are like that soft character nan jechana god help me i am lucky indha maari da ana avanga avlo kashtapadu vandu solla illa really solla maatikiranga casual adhu da nalladhu super la some motivation ah very nice thank you so much guys for watching this video we have one more video but i don't think we will be making that video today but maybe tomorrow but this three videos will be uploaded back to back to back because we loved it we three got motivated and this is the first time watching this part 3 and um, so i'm really happy that i'm watching this with my friends so thank you so much guys for watching and stick with me till this point i'm i'm sure this video is 30 minutes long i don't know how much long i have said if you are from if you are if you stayed till now you are the best thank you so much guys for watching subscribe to this channel help us reach 100k in no time thank you so much for watching i'll see you on the next video this is tamar this is alan see you on the next video guys and then peace out and bye